Assalamu alaikum and a very warm welcome to Pakistan's National Day Ceremony. Thank you so much for joining us online to celebrate the 81st National Day of Pakistan. It was on this day in 1940 that the Muslims of the Indian subcontinent decided to separate their homelands where they could live um, according to the golden principles of Islam. We are privileged for having been joined by the Honorable Minister of Education and Manpower, Her Excellency Madam Gan Siang Huang. We will commence the ceremony with recitation of the Holy Quran by Mr. Hashar Ali Gardezi. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now the national anthems of Singapore and Pakistan will be played. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are presenting a vibrant and colorful national song of Pakistan. Watan ki meti kawa harahena Gawa harahena Watan ki meti kawa harahena Gawa harahena Watan ki meti
तेरी दुआ से कजा तो बदल नहीं सकती मगर है इससे ये मुमकिन कि तू बदल जाए तेरी दुआ है कि हो तेरी आरजू पूरी मेरी दुआ है तेरी आरजू बदल जाए खोलाख समी देख फलक देख फजा देख इस जलवाए पे पर्दा को पर्दों में छुपा देख बेदा ना हो मार काए बी मोर जा देख आईनाए अयाम में आज अपनी अदा देख है राग पे तकदीर जहां तेरी रजा Excellency Madam Gan Xiao Huang, Minister of State for Education and Manpower, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for virtual celebration of Pakistan National Day today. First of all, I would like to wish a very happy National Day to our diaspora in Singapore. You are the real pride of Pakistan and a human bridge connecting Pakistan with Singapore. Pakistan wants to forge mutually beneficial relations with Singapore, not only on bilateral plane, but also in its capacity as a key member of ASEAN. of which Pakistan is a sectoral dialogue partner our bilateral relations have a huge scope to grow in diverse fields especially in trade and investment domains we greatly appreciate singapore's technical cooperation program to learn from its unprecedented story of economic success pakistan high commission is working closely with singapore business federation to build a meaningful economic partnership between our two countries we are keen to enhance singapore's investment footprint in pakistan and welcome its interest in our it housing construction tourism smes and logistics and agro food sectors china pakistan economic corridor already in its second phase of development offers lucrative incentives for investment in specially import substitution and technical 
technology related fields. We are keen to expand and diversify our exports to Singapore and build close people to people and business to business relations between our two countries. When COVID-19 hit last year and Pakistan High Commission started a fundraising campaign led by our diaspora to procure the much needed PPEs and test kits from Singapore, the Masik Foundation was the first to answer our call. It donated test kits, oxygenators, and surgical masks in large quantities to help the government of Pakistan combat the pandemic. TF's generous support was widely acknowledged and appreciated by the government of Pakistan by adding it in the Foreign Minister's Honours List. Pakistan's participation in Singapore FinTech Festival opened up another chapter in our relations. One of our FinTechs, Credit Fix, who participated in both 2019 and 2020 festivals, laid the foundation of Pakistan FinTech Association with 30 Pakistani FinTechs on board. PFA has already signed AMOU with Singapore FinTech Association to further boost this partnership and encourage foreign investment in Pakistan's digital economy. We are also keen to learn from Singapore's technical and vocational training system to fill the skill gap of our workforce and benefit immensely from the recently signed MOU for cooperation between National Vocational and Technical Training Commission of Pakistan and Institute of Technical Education Singapore. Prime Minister Imran Khan's meeting with Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong in Davos on the sidelines of World Economic Forum last year and his invitation to PM Lee to visit Pakistan will reinvigorate leadership level interaction between Pakistan and Singapore and lay the ground for close cooperation between the two countries on bilateral and multilateral fora. Long live Pakistan, long live Pakistan Singapore friendship. Thank you. May I now invite uh, the Minister of State of Education and Manpower, Her Excellency Madam Gan Xian Kuang to deliver her remarks on National Day of Pakistan. Your Excellency Ruksana Afzal, High Commissioner of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honoured to join you today in celebration of Pakistan's 81st National Day. Singapore and Pakistan are long-standing friends. Whilst we established diplomatic relations 55 years ago in 1966, we share a history that dates back further. Pre-independent Singapore welcomed early settlers from what is modern-day Pakistan. Over the decades, many more Pakistanis have made this island their home and helped shape our country into what it is today, a vibrant, multi-ethnic and multicultural city-state. The last year has been a tough one for all countries due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic continues to affect our lives and livelihoods. We're still not yet out of the woods, as countries now turn their attention towards vaccinating their populations and reviving their economies. I'm encouraged to see that Pakistan is committed to undertaking reforms to bolster its fiscal resilience and stimulate economic recovery from the impact of COVID-19. The pandemic's global impact has shown us that recovery will require close cooperation with the international community. I'm heartened to note that we have continued to find ways to collaborate where we can and address some of these common challenges together. Amidst the pandemic, we have managed to find ways to enhance our linkages. At the end of last year, Pakistan's National Vocational and Technical Training Commission and Singapore's ITE Education Services concluded an MOU on Technical and Vocational Education and Training, or TVET. As Minister of State for Education and Manpower, this initiative is close to my heart. Singapore firmly believes in human resource development as a key to economic and social progress. TVET is a crucial vehicle for social equity, inclusion and sustainable development. It is my hope that this MOU will present opportunities for us to mutually share our expertise and meet the needs of our current and future workforce. We see tremendous potential for more cooperation, which will boost both our economies. The advancement of digital economies has been unexpectedly accelerated by the pandemic, and fintech has emerged as a promising area of collaboration with Pakistan. 
With Pakistan High Commission's strong support, Pakistani fintech companies have been active participants in Singapore's fintech festival over the last two years. There are also opportunities in possible collaborations in areas such as food security, agricultural technology, shipping and energy. On that note, please allow me to extend my most sincere congratulations on the occasion of Pakistan's 81st National Day. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Lahore is the second largest city in Pakistan and the capital of the Punjab province. It is world renowned not only for its rich culture and heritage, but also for the exuberant people, fabulous food and the love for literature. It has recently been given the title of the City of Literature by UNESCO. Um, since we cannot take a trip down to Lahore, unfortunately, due to the pandemic, um, let me take you on a virtual tour to this beautiful city in Pakistan. Lahore, a mural of history and a cultural hub of Pakistan. Years of living history, Lahore reached its zenith under the Mughal rulers. Lahore Shahar ko agar sabse zada faqiyat hasil hui ya sabse zada importance ke liye to wo Mughal aedhe hukumat ke liye. Lahore Shahar ki ek multi-dimensional cosmopolitan ek ye shahar hai ki jiske andar mukhtif kome abad hui. Iska jo culture hai. The origin of Lahore is the walled or inner city, a very densely crammed populated area. 22,000 properties within 2.5 square kilometer. A 30 feet brick wall grew around the walled city with access gained through the 13 ancient gates known as Masti Gate, Kashmiri Gate, Sheramala Gate, Yaki Gate, Dehli Gate, Akbari Gate, Mochi Gate, Shahalmi Gate, Lahori Gate, Mori Gate, Bhati Gate, Taksali Gate and Roshnai Gate. Within these gates is a world of its own. Mosques and monuments, colorful bazaars, rich cuisine, arts, crafts and architecture amidst a maze of narrow winding streets. The walled city brings within the hustle bustle of life. From early dawn till very late in the night. The walled city virtually never goes to sleep. Reading history is one thing, but experiencing history is another, which is much more livelier and interesting. Old city represents the best form of our living culture, its traditions and heritage. Most important, if nations lose their identity, they become clueless. 
and instead of knowing about other cultures it is first very important for your own people to know your own history your own culture and your own heritage a variety of colorful bazaars like akbari mandi van market shekhupuriya bazaar and kesra bazaar with teeming people is the essence of the walled city it's amazing how much business is conducted in such a limited space one of the most attractive features of walled city is the havelis the living mansions with open courtyard and amazing woodwork and the red bricks a very few havelis are well kept maintained either by private owners or government institutions during mubarak haveli chuna mandi haveli nisar haveli haveli of dhyan singh haveli of dinanath and haveli barood khana survived शहर है लाहौर मेरा दिल का एक बहुत बड़ा टुकड़ा है लेकिन कुछ ऐसी जगह है जो आज मैंने डिस्कवर की इस किले में आके ये लाहौर पोर्ट है मेरे ख्याल में पूरी दुनिया में आपको इस तरह की स्पेस और इस तरह की जगह देखने को नहीं मिलेगी पटना इसको रिवाइव किया गया है कमाल शाही साहब ने लाहौर वॉल सिटी एडवाइज एवरीबडी टू कम एंड एक्सपीरियंस हम लोगों ने एक ऐसा एक्सपीरियंस किया है जो कि दुनिया में हर एक को करना चाहिए सबसे पहले तो लाहौरियों को करना चाहिए फिर पूरे पाकिस्तान को करना चाहिए ताकि दुनिया को और फिर उसके बाद बुलाएं और कहें कि ये हमारी तारीख है साढ़े चार हजार साल पुरानी तारीख इस शहर की इतनी खूबसूरती से दिखाया कि दिल खुश हो मैं कामरान लाशारी साहब उनकी पूरी टीम को मुबारकबाद पेश करती हूँ और फोर्ट में रात को और खाना खाना यहाँ दोस्तों से मिलना और फिर प्लान करना कि आगे क्या करना है मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा बहुत अच्छा आई एम श्योर that this beautiful this very rich living form of culture we won't let it decline and let it die away common heritage is a common calling of responsibility let's stand together committed to the preservation of our rich heritage and identity Our next segment is a painting exhibition by Ms. Irma Shafak, a well-known artist and a student of Jimmy Engineer, an eminent Pakistani artist. Irma has already exhibited her work in many places around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy the exhibition.
also a day to celebrate those Pakistanis who became pioneers of several key uh, industries and services in Pakistan, such as shipping, aviation, IT and software, engineering, infrastructure, development, police services and accounting. Their services were acknowledged by Singapore. They're a great source of strength and pride for us and our own common assets. Let's hear from them their story, the story of Singapore journey from a third world country to a first world country in the little span of 50 years. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Abdul Latif Siddiqui. I came to Singapore in 1989. I, I'm, by profession, I'm a marine engineer and uh, I started working with uh, Singapore maritime giants like NOL and uh, V ships. They, after that, I reached the highest uh, hierarchy within a short period of time. During this period, I facilitated a lot of uh, Pakistanis for the job opportunities in, in these companies. They, uh, it which benefits them as an individual. Also, it benefits the country for in, in the form of Forex. Soon I realized that as a as a employee, I'm not able to do much. I have potential by the grace of Allah to, to work as an entrepreneur. Thereby I started Global Radiance. Our annual turnover is about 10 million, which we expect to reach uh, in this year, inshallah, 14 million. We remit more than 6 million to Pakistan as, as salaries for our we employ our, our seafarers who are, work, who are working, more than 500 seafarers who are working on our boat, our, our ships. And also we have an office, auxiliary office in Pakistan, which is also providing a lot of job opportunities and also source of remittance for them. I, it, is, it is my passion to provide job because I believe on the philosophy of uh, teach a person how to catch a fish rather than giving a fish. And Alhamdulillah, we we are not only just providing the job, we are providing uh, job opportunities for the trainees, for the cadets, internship. Alhamdulillah, we are. I mean, pr I can proudly say that we are working with both the countries very closely. I, especially Singapore being marine hub, and Pakistan now with the CPAC, the Gawadar port. There is a lot of things which can be is, uh, Pakistan can learn and can uh, get technologies from Singapore. Unfortunately, now Pakistan, there is a huge gap in the marine sector and uh, looking at all those things, we don't have the opportunities for our young cadets, 150 cadets are passing out from the marine academy and hardly 10% they are getting the jobs. Singapore is a marine hub and Pakistan now considering the CPAC, Gawadar port need a lot of, I mean, technologies. Uh, I believe there is a I mean, huge uh, potential that both countries can work together. The, with present uh, our ambassador, honorable ambassador, uh, her efforts, I'm sure we will be able to work together in, in many areas. However, what I can see in Pakistan, there is a huge gap uh, uh, of, uh, in the shipping sector in the form of we don't have our own flagships. We have only 10 to 12 ships and this is not giving enough opportunity for our seafarers to get a job especially the cadets 150 cadets are passing out every year only 10 cadets 10 percent cadets they are getting a job so for in this uh, area we need to to really uh, look into it and uh, the same spirit i went to uh, to meet met, uh, meet uh, honorable prime minister and offered him to bring in 50 flagships pakistani flagships with the investment of two billion dollars and alhamdulillah meeting was successful and we are still working on it and we will inshallah we'll see soon some good results in this area beside this we are always supporting uh, on the humanitarian needs and and uh, any uh, call from the prime minister when prime minister called for for uh, donation for the dam funds we contributed hundred thousand dollars from our group to to the dam funds in Pakistan. On this important occasion of Pakistan Resolution Day, I would like to give a message to our youth that they have to work hard, they have to improve on the education, competence and humility. The market is very competitive, in after, especially after the COVID. If we don't improve, 
it will be very difficult for us to sur survive. We have to keep our cost low and the performance at the highest level. Inshallah, if we will work, we will make Pakistan as a brand and everybody will enjoy the fruit. I would like to thank also Pakistan High Commission in Singapore for their efforts and especially the Honorable Ambassador for ener energizing the Pakistan diaspora in Singapore. Thank you very much, Pakistan Zindabad. Shahzad Naseem and I am the executive chairman of Mindheart Group headquartered in Singapore. Singapore in 1972 to study engineering. I was a very young student at that time and the plan was to come and study engineering and then move on. I in fact got admission both in Singapore and in Cornell and guess what I decided to come to Singapore. This was the best decision I made in my life. And again, as you know, with the passage of time, Singapore grows on you. And I too fell in love with Singapore. And now, in fact, I became Singaporean. My son and his next generation are all Singaporean. After graduation, I joined Mineheart Singapore um, at the bottom of the food chain as an employee and worked my way up slowly but surely and I became the uh, CEO of the Mineheart International in 1997. In 2010 I actually bought the company from the Mineheart family and I shifted the headquarters to Singapore and the rest is history. Actually turning a third world country into a first world country in such a short span of time is nothing less than a miracle and the credit that really goes to Singapore leadership who worked tirelessly to make Singapore a better place for its people. I mentioned Singapore leaders are very, very hands-on and therefore you can actually discuss any issues with them and they are very proactive in solving and addressing issues. And that's a big difference between many other countries and Singapore. Singapore is the business center of the world. So one way to improve and expand the relationship will be to expand the business. Currently, the trade between Singapore and Pakistan is pretty small. The other is to develop people's to people link. And those links actually develop at the back of business. So this is something which we can re really you guys can work on. Pakistan can also expand its bilateral relationship with Singapore by arranging high level exchanges and that really develops the relationship between the leaders. Now as you probably know Singapore is known for its educational standards and capacity building in government officials. So I think Pakistan can definitely tap into this expertise of Singapore. The other thing is that embassies play a key role in developing these relationships and I understand your current ambassador is doing a great job of this. So, you know, that's the way to expand business. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Rishna Zahra Gadezi and today I would be telling you about what I like about Pakistan. First of all, I love the tourist attractions and the greenery of Pakistan. The amazing nature is filled with wonder and beauty. Secondly, I love the culture of Pakistan. I always enjoy celebrating Eid and other special occasions with my family and friends as I get to decorate my house and eat delicious foods. Lastly, I love the food of Pakistan. I especially love biryani and tikka. And for dessert, I love the delicious gulab jamun. Thank you. I'm Sajjad Akhtar. I'm the chairman of PKF uh, Cap Singapore uh, and founder partner of this firm. 
He arrived in Singapore in 1980, which is uh, 41 years ago. And Singapore was in its early stages. It was already the cleanest place on earth, some people thought. And it was in an early stage of uh, perhaps it's a great leap forward that it made from around that time in the next decades to come. Well, I was posted here by international firm called Arthur Anderson, which is an international network of uh, accounting and consulting firms, one of the largest it was. And I was really with them, um, as posted from actually from UK, from where I went to Iran for a year in Dubai, and then we moved to Singapore, 1980. Uh, over time, it's it's been very, um, very enlightening, I must say. Singapore leadership is is uh, in those days when we first came, as you know, Lee Kuan, Lee Kuan Yew was very much in charge, the prime minister. Um, subsequently. I think he retired somewhere in the 90s when uh, his uh, when Go Chok Tong became Prime Minister. So of course I didn't know uh, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew personally or uh, I met Go Chok Tong one or, once or twice uh, and then Mr. Lee Sian Lung later on. But of course I knew a number of, of ministers in the cabinet and uh, senior people. They are very um, committed and very long vision but visionary people started when i started this business 2002 that's our own business since 2000 more than 20 years and i've been uh, in the initial years i was a member of various committees later on i became chairman of their uh, finance committee and i'm still serving to this day as chairman of the finance committee as i recognized well i was recognized i got the public service medal award in 2009 uh, sitting there uh, I was awarded the uh, public service star so which in English you know your public public service medal is PBM the Malay equivalent is PBM and then BBM I was awarded in 2016 which is the public service star a higher award so at least, uh, you know, these are recognitions that the government has given me, for which I'm very grateful. Well, I think Singapore is a very uh, pragmatic and uh, objective kind of country. You know, they look at relationships very objectively, very uh, progressively, with a view to having good, uh, honest commercial relationships on a, you know, even footing, uh, balanced. Um, but relationship with Pakistan has traditionally been friendly. Pakistan, there's no reason why Pakistan can't be one of the recipients or, or be on good terms both ways in trade, in terms of trade with Singapore. I love Pakistan. Pakistan is in the bar. And my favorite food is biryani and I miss my grandpa. Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Dr. Aisha Khanna and I am CEO of Addo AI, an artificial intelligence consulting firm headquartered in Singapore and Pakistan. So we came to Singapore about eight and a half years ago. I had lived before that in America and briefly in London. My expectation was that it would give me an opportunity to access the Asian market and of course to be closer to Pakistan as well. And absolutely building my company here and uh, taking advantage of Asia's exploding consumer population and growth has been incredibly satisfying. When I moved to Singapore, I decided I wanted to start an AI and data science company that would serve the largest companies in the world, building intelligent data platforms for them. Starting a company in Singapore is very straightforward and it's easy government paperwork, is very smooth. And in the first few years as a startup, the government really subsidizes and encourages especially deep tech startups. Um, I have also been lucky enough to be on the board of a few government agencies and I've been very impressed by the foresight with which the Singapore government plans the digital economy of the country and upskills its citizens to make sure they're prepared for the 21st century. 
Singapore and Pakistan have a lot to contribute to each other. Many of our wonderful startups in fintech, in logistics, in healthcare can be incorporated here as well so that they can get access to global funding and capital. And I know that the Pakistan Embassy here has been encouraging that and very supportive of that as well. At the same time, Singaporean companies can find a new economy to take its expertise to, especially in smart cities, because this country has really made smart city living accessible, qualitatively better, and also efficient. I think both countries would benefit a great deal by the exchange not only of entrepreneurs and students, but also government-led delegations so that we can contribute to each other's growth and the friendship and partnership can grow. Assalamu alaikum. Pakistan is very good. I love Pakistan. I'm Shidhu. I'm Shidhu. I'm Shidhu. I'm Shidhu. My name is Munir Shah. I am a mediator with TADEM, which stands for Tripartite Alliance for Dispute Management at the Ministry of Manpower Service Centre. And I have been with Shell for about 35 and a half years. And uh, after retiring from Shell, uh, this was an opportunity that came by for me to continue my contribution to this country. My grandfather, um, Hassan Muhammad Shah, he came to this part of the world in 1910. And uh, the, in those days, uh, he had to travel from his hometown of Jalandhar in India uh, because it wasn't partitioned then via uh, Calcutta and then on to Penang and then uh, he started working as part of the British uh, Punjab regiment and my father was the eldest of nine siblings and he was born in Ipoh in Malaya in those days it was known. Uh, my father joined the Singapore police force before the war and when we say before the war we mean the Japanese occupation from 1942 to 1949. My father rose to the rank of superintendent of police and assistant commissioner of police in an acting capacity in his last days uh, with the Singapore police force. His contribution over a span of 36 years saw him move from officer in charge of the criminal investigation department to the traffic police to the Singapore police cadet corps to the various detachments in the Singapore police force and it was a very varied experience in which his major contribution in those days I remember was the elimination of secret societies because secret societies was uh, very rampant and uh, their elimination in uh, running records like gambling syndicates and uh, even uh, trying to uh, get protection money from businesses and so on was a major challenge. My father had a, a parallel uh, importance or contribution to this country, not just in the police force in maintaining law and order, but he was an avid sportsman during his heydays. He was an all-rounder, but his main sports was actually athletics when he was. He was in that pioneering batch of people to join and because he was good in both studies as well as games he rose to represent Singapore in rugby uh, in athletics as well and he eventually um, left his mark in as the president of the Singapore Rugby Union where he was president from 1971 to 1975. My father introduced the yellow box that you see in all major roads in Singapore in the early 1970s. We were the first country in Southeast Asia to introduce the yellow box. So even till today, if you, if you go to the police museum in New Phoenix Park, you will see that the legacy that he left uh, was actually in this uh, introduction, which until today is still being used. In the early days, there was almost direct contact with the prime minister of this country. My, my father has received several uh, accolades in the Singapore police force. But I think one of uh, the highest national award would be the Public Service Medal that is given to exemplary uh, officers who have served in the various ministries in Singapore. 
So that would be the highest you know, medal that he would have got. But the recognition, I think, comes in the, in, by way of the fact that he has been appointed uh, as, you know, like I said earlier on, manager of the Singapore team for uh, rugby and then for, for athletics to represent Singapore. Those are the kind of, you know, uh, which are given prominent uh, coverage in the newspapers. Uh, and, and that's how people get to notice and, you know, and the fact that when he passed away, uh, the Straits Times carried a, a very, uh, you know, very glowing article, I would say, you know, uh, pertaining to his contribution. Uh, it's not just the Straits Times, but the other vernacular language papers as well, the, uh, the new paper, uh, the Berita Harian in Malay, and even in the Chinese uh, newspaper, you know, uh, Yan He Chapao, as well as the Tamil Murasu. So, that kind of coverage, you know, across uh, the spectrum, you know, publicity in the various publications, uh, the local publications, I think, is, is the uh, achievement that is more visible for people to notice. I love Pakistan because it's the most beautiful country because my army Abu left here, long live Pakistan. My name is uh, Anwar Masood Khan. Uh, I'm a civilian pilot. I was uh, trained in Pakistan and I flew for Pakistan International Airline for almost 25 years before I joined uh, Singapore Airline. Now, I joined Singapore Airline in 1973 and uh, retired from there in 1986. After that, when they bought bigger aeroplanes, Boeing 747, I was sent to Seattle, America, for further training. I would like to mention that Singapore Airline was not only dependent on the national pilots. Uh, their policy as uh, I think in the whole of the country is such that whoever can contribute anything to them, he is most welcome. It was a pleasure to fly for Singapore Airline because uh, uh, like in any other field, they are very, very efficient country. And uh, Singapore Airline was running very efficiently also. After I retired, they offered me Singapore nationality. Uh, they sent me a, a pack of forms if I would like to apply for nationality, which of course I did not because I wanted to come back to my own country. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, they were quite prepared to give me their nationality. One of the Singaporeans who happens to be my, uh, in Urdu we call it Samdi, uh, his daughter is married to my son. Uh, he went and established their uh, shipping company from the scratch. He was their first managing director, Mr. M. J. Said. He was very respected by even the Prime Minister of Singapore. Uh, when he died, they established a chair in the university in his name. And uh, they used to to uh, invite him after he retired, they used to invite him every year for their anniversary. So, uh, I mean, he established that, uh, uh, the, uh, I think his name is Neptune. I can go back there soon. I'm Veru Setna, wife of late Mr. Sohi Setna. We came to Singapore in May 1907. Okay. Singapore was a very okay. small place. It was considered a third world country, but still it was quite well organized. 
Singapore had its own charm. It was a busy port and shipping. That is why Singapore government wanted to have its own national shipping lines to be able to import and export and do trade with other countries. So that's how in 1969, NOL, a global shipping line, was formed. The first managing director was Mr. M.J. Sai, and the chairman was Mr. Hon Sui Sen, who was the finance minister then. He constantly traveled with Mr. Go Chok Tong to develop business in China and established business relationship with Mr. Y.K. Pao, the shipping tycoon in Hong Kong. He was closely in touch with Mr. Go Chok Tong all the time until he became the Prime Minister. Even when he became Prime Minister, he would take him in his business delegation to various countries. He traveled with him to Papua New Guinea and places like that. He started out as engineering superintendent, looking after the entire fleet of NOL, and later became senior general manager, chartering division. He actively grew the chartering business. Mr. Michael Wokong Park Shong remarked in 1980, who was the chairman then, that he was, that Soli was devoted and dedicated to the cause of NOL. He worked very closely with Mr. Go Chok Tong when after he, Mr. Go became the managing director of NOL. He was a consultant to International Factors Marine Private Limited and was a Singapore director in the Baltic and International Maritime Council in Europe. He was a pioneer in setting up of Neptune agencies and was also director of a lot of associated Neptune companies. He passed away on the 19th of August, 1988, at the age of 56. <laughs> Pakistan, ja, ja, Pakistan, del, del, Pakistan, ja, ja, Pakistan. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings me to the end of today's ceremony. Let us pray for peace, progress, and prosperity for our country and the whole world. Let us seek help from Allah to overcome the pandemic and wish quick recovery to all those suffering from this deadly disease. On behalf of the High Commission of Pakistan, I thank you all for being here today. Long live Pakistan and Singapore friendship, Pakistan Zindabad.